Welcome to this week's Science and Spirituality, where in the conclusion of a three-part series, we continue to highlight the very intriguing work of biophysicist, inventor, and pioneer of the innovative scientific field called electrophotonics, Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, who is based in St. Petersburg, Russia. Dr. Karatkov is also the author and co-author of several books, including Measuring Energy Fields, State of the Science, Science, Aura, and Consciousness, New Stage of Scientific Understanding, and Light After Life, the Gas Discharge Visualization, or GDV technique invented by Dr. Karatkov, allows for the real-time study of energy fields, or auras, emanating from humans and objects. One of the uh, instruments to measure energy are bioelectrography instruments. It was in 1777 when German physicists found that in electrical field you can see light coming from some subjects. Uh, it is all related to electricity and photons. Our team was able to transform this to a new stage. So it is transformation from photography to digital computer processing and digital analysis. Dr. Karatkov's research on the unseen world of energy fields and consciousness is yet another example of science bringing us a closer understanding of our true divine nature and innate creative powers. The connection with uh, universal power, informational field, is a very complicated topic. Uh, we were able to measure a lot of people who have this excess of this connection. It was done in special experiments. A very special connection comes in altered state of consciousness. At some moments, if you are deeply in meditative state, or if you can transform to this altered state of consciousness, you may have this connection. And it's not only for saints, those are same for artists, for musicians, for poets, for scientists, for engineers, businessmen, high management people. It's the main process of inspiration and of creativity. Einstein wrote a lot about spiritual topics, about connections to God. Newton was a very spiritual person. Mendeleev got his vision of Mendeleev table in his dream. Uh, so it is uh, very typical for a lot of scientists, uh, creators, uh, musicians, poets. This is the way of creativity. Just as all human beings and animals emanate energy fields, so do plants and even inanimate objects like water. Since time immemorial, spiritual teachers have spoken of a universal energy that permeates all of creation. Uh, energy field. This is quantum property of nature. So any subject has energy field. Quantum properties and on quantum level we are the same. We are just the same as uh, stones, the same as minerals. That's why we are measuring energy from water. And this very interesting line of study. Uh, we are measuring uh, different subjects uh, in nature and we are measuring the environment with special sensors. Truly, as science delves more deeply into the unknown through such experiments, we are rediscovering that we're not limited by the boundaries of the material world. The main uh, message that I got from our measurements 15 years, that we have our consciousness power, our mind power. With this power, we can recreate our life. We can strongly influence our energy field, and we can really change our life. Next are uh, environment that we live in, water, air, food, environmental station. And next level, those are the level of intercommunication with us. Uh, we have special sensors that allow us to take measurements in the energy of environment. And I've been traveling uh, in different parts of the world, in South America, Southeast Asia, 
Russia, Siberia, Africa, and everywhere we were looking for the places of high energy. It was always the places of worship. As we've been measuring in uh, churches, in monasteries, in temples, in different countries, in different religions. And everywhere we found that those are places of very high energy. A lot of these places are being used as healing places. People coming there, they increase energy and they can be treated with, from different problems. Because this is the use of energy of the earth. And ancient people were able to feel this energy. And they were selecting special places. With our instrument we can measure this. And without any doubts, our earth has its own energy field. Earth is communicating with the environment, with space, with cosmos. Dr. Karatkov has also investigated the power of people across the globe uniting in thought, prayer, or meditation to achieve a common, constructive purpose. If you have positive attention, if you have positive attitude to life, to environment, to other people, then you make life around yourself much more positive, really can change environment. As we are collective beings, as we have our collective informational field, together we can do a lot. Of development in spirituality is collective process. If we include more and more people in this collective spiritual process, it would allow to change the consciousness of the humankind. People will collect together and meditate and pray for peace. And I believe that this is how uh, spirituality may be developed. We did many experiments of this kind. Uh, so it's possible to measure collective meditation. And we did these experiments in different countries. We put this sensor in the room where people are meditating and we immediately see the effect when we have collective consciousness we have more and more strong influence to the world. And of course, it's important to have the positive direction. Then positive collective consciousness would tremendously influence our environment. In the quest to modernize and improve our technological status, humanity unfortunately has become disconnected from the very source that has sustained our lives and nurtured us. As Earth citizens, we have regretfully neglected our duty to be good stewards of the environment. It's only the beginning of the process of the influence of humankind to the Earth. We did a lot of harm to the Earth. In the ocean, you can find big areas that is uh, contaminated with garbage. We need to change the attitude of humankind to the environment and then it will be possible for the Earth to restore and embrace humankind as a part of nature. Organic vegetables, fruits, grains, beans, seeds and nuts are grown without the use of harmful chemicals and are thus the most environmentally friendly foods for enhancing the well-being of both humans and our planet. Cultivation of vegan organic crops reduces the damaging carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by absorbing this greenhouse gas in the soil. Different type of food. It's absolutely different energy. Uh, organic apple and apple grown uh, chemically. Absolutely different energy. Uh, organic plant and uh, chemically grown plant of tremendous difference. So now we live in dangerous world. We have so many chemicals around ourselves that it poisons the whole generations. Those chemicals, they create epigenetic transformation of humankind. And this is dangerous. This is very bad. Now, epigenetically, new generation of babies has a lot of allergies. Why? Because of contaminations in food. It comes from parents eating this chemical food. We need to understand that uh, we have passed this chemical century. 20th century was a century of chemicals. 
and people were thinking that by transforming chemicals we can create new medications, new plastic things, uh, we can create new food, it will be great for humankind. It was found, no, we need to come to nature. We need to use the power of nature. It's very interesting. In uh, St. Petersburg, around Soviet time, they used to uh, use a lot of chemicals in farming, in agriculture. And our forest was practically empty. No animals, no bees, no butterflies. Now they don't use chemicals anymore. They are transforming to natural farming. And there are a lot of animals, more and more every year. This year we had many butterflies in our fields, in our forest. We have a lot of foxes, rabbits, uh, different activity in the forest. It means that after we stop this chemical contamination of nature, nature can recreate itself. And it's not only for animals, it's for ourselves as well. So we need to get this as a message, as a lesson. Supreme Master Ching Hai frequently speaks about how a global shift to an organic plant-based diet is the best way to preserve our planet, as in this excerpt from a November 2009 interview by Radio Formula QR 92.3 FM that is based in Cancun, Mexico and serves the state of Quintana Roo. We need to rethink our lifestyle we have to rethink the whole planet, uh, species and survival, not just uh, for our enjoyment uh, day to day or momentarily. We have to think uh, very unselfishly, as you have said. Yes, just to be vegan is very simple. That saves all the lives on the planet, save the animals, save the environment, and save the world for our children future. From the betterment of human relations to creating peace among nations and restoring the environment, science now acknowledges what ancient spiritual traditions have long understood, that humankind has the power to steer the course and fate of our planet. Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, the implications of your studies on human consciousness and intentions are both meaningful and powerful. We appreciate the time taken from your busy schedule to speak to us about your admirable work that blends science and spirituality. May your fine research continue to inform the world on these important issues in the future. For more information on Dr. Karatkov, please visit www.new.karatkov.org. Dr. Karatkov's book, Light After Life, A Scientific Journey into the Spiritual World, is available at www.amazon.com. Thoughtful viewers, thank you for joining us today for the conclusion of our discussion with Dr. Karatkov. Up next on Supreme Master Television is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. May we always be in touch with the Universal Consciousness. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.